Hello. Today we are going to practice drawing uh, a proton in MR spectrum of this molecule here, this alkyl halide, um, as a way to practice the different um, parts of NMR, right? The different information that the data gives us. So on the right here, I have an NMR table. We're going to ignore it for a second, and we're just going to jump into this. So this molecule here would have four peaks in its 1H NMR spectrum. So you might take the skeletal structure and fill it in, make it a complete line bond structure. We're going to have, um, let's see, here we go. We're going to have an A, peak A, B, C, and D. Right, so four peaks. We have two CH2s, right, which I've labeled here A and B. However, this CH2 uh, is next to the chlorine. It's in a different environment than this CH2, which is in between a CH2 and a CH, a methyl and a methylene. Oh, excuse me, uh, methylene and a methyne. So then um, I might start making a table with the integrations that I expect for the peaks. Right, so HA should really have an, the peak for HA should really have an integration of two because there are two HAs, there are two HBs, there is one HC, and then there are uh, six HDs. Okay. The next thing I might do, and again, my goal here is to draw a spectrum, is to think about the number of neighbors that each one of those sets of hydrogens have. So HA has two neighbors, the HBs, okay? HB have HA for neighbors, and then HC. So HB has three neighbors. Um, H excuse me, HB has three neighbors. HC has a lot of neighbors, right? HC has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? eight neighbors. And then HD um, has one neighbor. Okay, so now the multiplicity, it's gonna be N plus one, that a triplet, right? And two plus one is gonna give us a triplet, a quartet, um, a multiplet with nine lines, okay, and then a doublet, okay. So then the last thing I might do is use my chemical shift table to estimate, I can't know exactly where, the chemical shifts in ppm. So hopefully without the table, you can tell that A is going to be the most de-shielded because all of those hydrogens all those, all those hydrogens, those two hydrogens are one, two bonds away from the chlorine, right? So they're gonna have the highest chemical shifts. Whereas HD, the six HDs there are going to have the lowest chemical shifts. So now to use the table, let's first look, uh, focus on HA. So like I said, H, the HAs, and there are two of them, are one, two bonds away from chlorine. Well, that's just the environment that we see here, my inalkyl halide. So we expect them to be between 2.5 and 4 ppm. Now, on the table, there is a CH2 listed, right? In HAs, those are a methylene, a CH2. But I'm not going to use that chemical shifts range, 1.2 to 1.6, because those chemical shift ranges are meant to be for alkanes, or uh, methylenes that are really far away from electronegative atoms, okay? So like for the chemical shift for D here, they are several bonds away from the chlorine. I'm going to use this chemical shift for primary um, alkyls or methyls, right? So 0 0.7 to 1.3. But again, I wouldn't use that for the CH2s I would use this information, that for an alkyl halide. Okay, so in case you didn't notice, this is how, right? Just like chlorine, one, two bonds away from that chlorine is that hydrogen, the chemical shift, 2.5 to four. HB is a CH2, 
okay, that those that has hydrogens that are one, two, three bonds away from chlorine, not really far away. So they're still gonna be somewhat deshielded, but we're gonna use this value here, okay? 1.2 to 1.6, okay? That tertiary hydrogen, HC, the methine, 1.4, to 1.8. Okay, so we have tabulated the information about our molecule that we can, and then we're ready to try to draw a spectrum. And again, we can really only estimate. So we say here's one, okay. So um, I'm gonna go from left to right here. So we're gonna have a peak, I'm gonna say right around 0.9, simply because I'm so used to seeing that it's going to have an integration of six. So that's going to be our tallest peak, and it's going to be a doublet. So this is six HDs, a doublet, because there's one neighbor, OK? Um, this multiplet uh, would only have an integration of one. So it's actually going to be very small. And let's say here is two, oh, actually. We're gonna have to put two pretty far, whoops, pretty far away to be able to fit everything. So let's say two is out here. Okay, here's two. So again, that multiplet for HC is gonna be pretty small. You might actually not even be able to see the lines for the, the shortest line. Um, so we'll say it's centered. One, here's 1.5, right around 1.5. Ugh, so I keep erasing the line there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe, maybe, maybe you get to see those. All right, so one HC. And that's going to be a multiplet, nine lines. And then 1.2 to 1.6. So I'm going to put those right next to. Um, HC, <clears throat> my B's there, they're gonna be a quartet. So let's pretend this is 1.6. So quartet, the integration is gonna be three. So one, two, and four, that's a quartet. Um, two HB's, and then last but not least, we'll put this guy up here. H A, it's gonna be a triplet. Oh, that line keeps going away. One, maybe not that tall. One, two, three. Oh, I did not label this guy a quartet there. So two HAs and a triplet. And there you have it. Those chemical shifts don't have to be exactly correct. Right, let's say this is three, but they are consistent with the relative chemical shifts of HA, which is the most deshielded, then HB, then HC, then HD, um, and they're within the range that the chemical shift table tells us. Okay, if you found this helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for new videos.